Today I'm going to build a sliding barn door. We've been needing one of these in our home for a, some time now, so I thought might as well go ahead and build it. The, the wood that I'm using for this project is Eco Poplar. Now the best way uh, that it, it was explained to me is that it's been cooked. Basically all of the sugars and sap would have been cooked out and it turns this brown color. And it just looks really, really good once it's cleaned up. And so to start off, I jointed one edge, I'm planing one side, and then I'll just go ahead and clean it up at the table saw on the opposite edge. Uh, this is going to give me a nice clean slate to start with so I can lay out the boards, see what I'm working with, and just go to work getting this thing put together. So for the door, it's going to be about 7 feet tall and about 41 inches wide. So I've got several of these boards that I need to glue up uh, and put together. But I can't do it all at once. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just lay out my biscuits for the door. Now this is what I'm doing here. And some of these boards, after I cleaned them up and they sat in the shop for a little while, they developed a slight twist and a couple of them had a, a bow in them. So... I wanted to make sure I had enough biscuits in there, so I laid the biscuits out every six inches. And I'm going to go ahead and number these boards so I don't get them mixed up later. Now, to start out, the first cut that I made was only about three or four inches from the end, and then it was every six inches. And the reason I wanted to go every six inches was just to make sure that all these boards lined up in the end. Because, like as I just mentioned, a couple of them had uh, a bow in them, and then also there was... Uh, one or two that had a slight twist in it. So I wanted to make sure everything was lined up. And so I thought every six inches with the biscuits would solve that problem. And it did in the end. I was very happy with the way that turned out. So I had to be careful not to get in a big hurry when I, were, when I was cutting the, the biscuit slots. Uh, so I had to make sure I, my biscuit joiner was nice and seated before I made my plunge cut. Because if you get your, your slots a little bit crooked or they're not center, then it's going to make it hard to get everything lined up when you get ready to do your glue ups so the next thing that I did was just chamfer the edges of the board I was trying to go for a tongue and groove feel once all the boards came together which it did I was happy the way it came out came out I would, I would have done it a little bit different if I had to do it over again but I'm gonna glue up these two boards let that dry and then glue up two more and then two more uh, so it, this this would be a lot easier than trying to glue up all seven boards at one time so here's the big glue up here it was kind of it was a little bit hairy there for a little bit trying to get everything lined up and getting the clamps in place and all that and I had to crawl up on top of the table to make sure the door was sitting nice and again uh, nice and flush and and secure against the clamps because I didn't want to have a bow in my door when it was all said and done so the pipe clamps worked out really good in this situation. Now, this video is su supported by Rockler. So I wanna say thank you to Rockler for, for their support. Uh, but these blue clamps that you see on the bottom of the door, they have those, what they call sure foot. Uh, and so they sit nicely on the table and they have a nice crank on them. They were really, really easy in a situation like this. Uh, I'm doing a door, I can see where those uh, Rockler clamps would be handy and doing a table as well so check out rockler and the links down in the description to the products that i used so now i can straighten up the ends clean them up get all the green paint off i'm just using a door board here to get a nice clean straight cut i want to make sure not to take off too much material because i want to keep this door as close to seven feet as possible so i didn't have too much to play with here uh, but it turned out that i i had just enough so now I'm going to add a piece of wood at the bottom and one at the top and also add in a diagonal piece across the entire door. Um, that's just a personal preference and design element, uh, if you will. It also gives it some overall strength uh, to the door as well. So now I can just shoot some brad nails from the backside, which the backside won't be seen near as much as the front uh, where we're going to be putting the door. So that's going to be just fine. Now for the diagonal piece, I clamped it in place and I struck a line with a pencil on both sides so, where I, so I knew exactly where the glue would go. So I put glue on the diagonal piece and between the lines there on the door and then I clamped it back in place. Now I don't show it here in the video for some reason I didn't get footage of this but I turned the door over once I get this clamped into place and I struck a or pulled a chalk line where that diagonal piece is so I'll know where to shoot brad nails. 
uh, and that was really really easy and so now I can just clean it up with a sander and get it all cleaned up and ready for finish so after I take the clamps off I turn the door back over and then I can just start applying finish to both sides now this eco poplar plus this I'm using water-based polyacrylic turned out really beautiful I love the color um, that it has and it just looks really good I also wanted to add in some visual interest and some contrast to the door as I do with a lot of my projects so I cut some dials and I'm gonna add those in at the top and bottom of the door it's gonna look, look like we've got some joinery going on uh, which is kinda cool but I love the contrast in that dark and light wood so I glued those in and I'm just gonna sand them flush with the door I get into the finish a little bit here and so I just go ahead and just re sand the whole board at the top and bottom and then I just refinish it so it, no big deal there it just looks really good once the finish goes on and dries uh, that light colored wood with that dark color looks really good in my my opinion I can move on to the hardware now which this hardware comes from Rockler as well and so you can get this kit I'll leave a link down in the description from Rockler but it's very easy to put together all I had to do was drill a couple of holes for each um, roller and then I had to mount the track on the wall now I've got a piece of wood on the wall here because I'm trying to give myself some clearance over my door but you could mount this directly to the wall if you wanted to as long as you made sure to mount it into studs I've got the piece of wood on the wall there in the studs and so I can just mount this track to that wood and I'm uh, I'm fine but once you've got the track mounted whether it's on the wall or a piece of wood like I've got you're pretty much ready to hang the door just make sure it's nice and secure and there's no play in it uh, but it all came together really nicely and I'm very pleased with it I had to add in some stops to keep the door from rolling off of the track on each end and also the guide at the bottom to keep it from swinging out away from the wall so all in all very very pleased with this check out the description below for links to uh, the products that I use and to also check out Rockler and also check out the website article there in the description as well it takes you to my website where I go into more details about this project and you can also find out more about who we are find out more about the plans that we offer get on our email list so you can stay up to date with all of the projects that we do and if you're not a subscriber to the channel please subscribe I'd love to have you back each and every week thanks for watching and we'll see you next time